Welcome back to Sip the Talent Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And as I was scrolling the internet, I came across an article from the Baltimore Banner and um, from Jonah Schaefer. And he dropped some, some tidbits from the last OTA. And as you know, OTAs have been going on for the past three weeks. Uh, next week is mandatory minicamp. And the difference is these OTAs that we've been getting highlights and news and reports from the past couple weeks have been voluntary. That's why guys have been there, have not been there. Uh, we've made a big deal about some guys being there, haven't really cared about other guys not being there. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mandatory. I don't think we have anybody that's in a contract situation that probably won't be there like a C.D. Lamb or the two receivers from uh, Cincinnati, um, Higgins and Chase. I, I don't think we have anybody in that situation. So I think for the most part, most of our team's going to be there. And we should get a a glimpse of what it potentially may look like, at least at the beginning of training camp, when the battles start to play themselves out. But um, Jonah dropped some tidbits from the last OTA. And what I want to do is just go through those four or five little nuggets that he dropped, give my two cents, and just give you guys a quick little overview of what I'm thinking um, before the mandatory minicamp um, jumps off. So I'll read what he has on each one, then I'll, you know, give my spiel and we'll go from there. And, you know, based off of what he dropped, because I know some people don't su subscribe to the banner, uh, you put what you think about, you know, each player that he talks about or each little uh, piece he, that he mentions. So first off, he says, uh, rookie wide receiver Devontae Walker had his best day of practice and perhaps the splashiest of any rookie yet. Late in practice in a relatively competitive 11-on-11 period, the speedy fourth-round uh, pick won a, on a vertical route down the left sideline and secured a catch from undrafted rookie em quarterback Emory Jones for a touchdown. A few minutes later, Walker had a twisting, toe-tapping, back-shoulder catch for another big game down the left sideline. And my take on this, when I had James on, we were talking about um, uh, Devontae. He just needs to be a one-trick guy until he gets the rest of his route running stuff down. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take him to fill out his route running repertoire, but for right now, we need him to be a D guy. Take the, take the top off the defense, go get you about 25 to 35 catches, have like a, a 16 to 18 yards per catch, you know, season, get you about three, 400 yards, and just be a threat. Be a threat to take the top off the defense, let everybody else handle everything else. Not saying he be the only person that, that run deep routes, but when he get in the game, the defense know, okay, Ted's in. We got to make sure we watch stuff over the top. That'll help the run game. That'll help Mark Zay. That'll help um, both Zays, likely, and uh, Flowers. That'll help, um, oh, uh, shoot, what's my other receiver? Bateman. That'll help Nelly. Like, having a deep guy that can just straight up fly, that'll help, that'll help all of them. The second tier bit that, that Jonah dropped, let me scroll down. Uh, obviously, Lamar was back for the last day. He said Jackson missed on a few, um, on his first two throws, one in the red zone period, and a manageable sideline throw to Flowers running the speed out, and a tougher end zone throw to wide receiver Malik Cunningham. And we all know Malik then officially transferred uh, to receiver, uh, who was well covered by safety Ardarius Washington before nailing Flowers on an over-the-shoulder ball just before the wide out ran out of space in one corner of the end zone. Now, I think it's imperative that Lamar be there. Now, a lot of people, myself included, um, didn't like the fact that Lamar missed a lot of the OTAs. And I'll give my two cents on why I didn't like it. Because um, I just feel like they need to get chemistry with the receivers. Um, is it like season threatening that he missed them? No. I just feel like if the best guy does it, then mostly everybody else should do it. And to me, that means Pat. Should he do everything Pat do? No. But I'm just saying, if if I was a quarterback and the best guy did certain things, I would try to mimic that to try to get to be 
do it. Like I just do it. I would do everything in my power to, to. And if I had like family stuff to do, yes, I could do my family stuff. And like if the dates didn't match up, I would still go do my family stuff because football is gonna take up most of my time starting in, you know, what next week and then starting in August. I understand family stuff, but if I could, I would just do most anything I could to get on point with all of my receivers. Not saying that he didn't or he he still can't do that. I'm just throwing it out there. But is it? career i mean not career season ending that he didn't do it no but just giving my two cents on why i felt like he probably should have maximized all that time with the receivers that's just my two cents and you tell me how you feel about that in the comment section all right the third uh tidbit he says left tackle ronnie stanley had today's most surprising highlight smoothly stabbing uh nabbing a pass that defensive lineman brent urban had batted down at the line of scrimmage and hitting Urban with a spin move and accelerating it to the open field as fans and players cheered. Now, why is that important? Because it signifies that Ryan may be healthy again. That's what that signifies to me. If he can do all that juking and spinning and, and whatnot, it signifies that he might be healthy again. Now, we may never get all pro Ryan back, but I just want a healthy Ryan. If we can get a healthy Ryan, a healthy Ryan may at least be a Pro Bowl Ryan. And that bowls well for the offensive line. That bowls well. Next tidbit. Um, and I can't, I, I'm just going to say Kane because I, I don't know how to pronounce his first name. But say, safety, uh, Sanusi Kane, lined up primarily with and against the team's reserves. Had his second interception in as many practices. The seven-round pick who could be in the mix for snaps as the third safety picked off an air pass and had a nice return. Now, um, I've been hearing some things about Kane, you know, doing some positive things. But I will say that Braid hadn't practiced that much because of an injury. I think him and Braid going to battle. And it's still, we still have some safeties out there that haven't been signed yet. There's some good safeties out there that have not been signed yet. And if they haven't been signed at this point, they probably won't get signed until right when training camp starts. Or once the season starts when somebody had like an injury or something like that. But there's still some good safeties out there. And I think Kane and Braves are going to fight for that third spot. And I know Tony Jefferson um, unretired. But I, I don't think he's working out for the Ravens. I think he's going to work out for somebody on the West Coast. So, we'll see what happens there. Next tidbit. He's, he's talking about Malik Cunningham again. Um... Malik Cunningham, whose hopes of making the team as a quarterback have seemingly faded away. He had a couple of nice catches, including a full extension grab near the sideline. And I mentioned that earlier about Malik fully transitioning to be a wide receiver. Has the speed, has the quickness, and he should also have a little bit of a knowledge gap on some other um, not top-tier receivers as far as knowing the game from a quarterback's point of view. Knowing where to be, knowing how the quarterback thinks, knowing where the quarterback kind of wants you as a receiver. So he should have a little bit of advantage on some guys as far as making the team. I don't think he'll make the 53, but he could make it as a uh, practice squad guy and then maybe work his way up to being on the 53 at some point. Um, next one. He says, one new drill should keep the Ravens passes and targets busy during install periods. Uh, during a red zone session early in the practice, all four quarterbacks took shotgun snaps from team personnel simultaneously while dropping back and throwing to one of four designated receivers in the pattern. Offensive coordinator Todd Monk and cycle from one play to another doing, I'm sorry, offering pointers on position. That's regular football stuff. If you got a bunch of quarterbacks and you got enough centers and receivers, that's regular, that's normal. Uh, inside linebacker Trent Simpson, who's in line to start alongside Roquan Smith after a largely uneventful rookie year, has impressed first-year inside linebacker coach Mark DeLone, physically and mentally. DeLone says Simpson is about as good as a physical specimen as anybody he's ever been around as an, and is improving regularly with how he sees the game. Uh, so Trent Simpson, on paper, is scheduled to start beside Roquan, but don't count out Malik. Don't count out Malik yet. Don't count him out. Now, Malik played a lot on edge, at the edge position last year. Like, if you go back and watch some of those games later in the season, you'll see Malik play first and maybe even second down, depending on the, the, the down and distance, at edge. And then, but then he'll come out and pass real situations on the edge. So, don't count out Malik playing a little bit of, of off-ball linebacker. But definitely Malik played really good on rundowns on edge. So, Malik may still do some of that this year. 
He may still, like on first, first, first and second down run situations, you may still see Owe and Malik uh, Harrison on setting the edge with maybe Trent Simpson and Roquan as your as your linebackers. Uh, next, Simpson, he mentioned Simpson again. He said, Simpson said, cornerback Nate Wiggins, whom he played with at Clemson, has definitely gained a little weight. The first round pick was listed as 185 pounds on the Tigers roster last season. Nope. Not true. <laughs> he definitely wasn't 185 pounds. Not even soaking wet. <laughs> but the Ravens officials expected him to add some more size and strength in the conditioning program. Nobody's going to run past him. So whatever the nutrition staff and the coaches feel is best for him, I'm excited for him. But nobody's running past Nate Wiggins, Simpson said. Uh, yes, I know that for a fact. But um, if Clemson had him listed at 185, that cat wasn't 185. <laughs> but he might get up to 185. If he can get up to 190, that'd be great. But like they, like uh, Simpson said, ain't nobody really running past him. But he was no one eight to five. And this just is the the few things that Jonah Schaefer had in the Baltimore banner. And I wanted to give my two cents on these little nuggets from um, the last OTA. Now mandatory OTAs will be this week, and whatever little nuggets they drop, I'll drop in and give my two cents. And for those that are interested, the um, power rankings that I did last season that seemed to be uh, a lot of people liked, I finished them um two days ago so i'll be recording the first one probably monday and i plan to debut them wednesday on the more sip the tally channel so starting wednesday um i think we're gonna be doing the weekdays wednesday thursday friday monday tuesday and we'll start with number 32 and we'll break our way down to number one so um if you have not subscribed to the more sip the tally channel to to be informed on the the power rankings of this year Make sure you go over there and do that. And um, that's all I got for you today, man. I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. This is Coach Evans with Sip the Tally Films, and I'll see y'all soon. Peace and love. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. We out.